All right, the multiple standard editions is a little bit more complicated um, because you're dealing with the graphic representation, just like we saw with multiple external standards. So in this case, you're going to make up all of your samples and your zero sample is actually your sample that you want to analyze. So it's got your concentration of your unknown already in it. And you're going to keep that constant in all of your standards. And then for each standard, you're going to add a known amount of the standard in increasing amounts. I'm um, just like we did with the external standards, but you also have your sample represented in each one of these. You then do the dilution up to the mark and the volumetrics, mix it really well, and then you'll see this increase in the signal uh, throughout the sample. And you'll notice um, the sample that contains no standard, right? You'll have just your sample alone, and then you'll start adding the standard to the next uh, samples. So on your um, uh, x-axis, you can either plot them in two different ways. You can plot the volume of the standard, right? And so you'll see your zero point actually still has a reading up here. And that's because your sample is still in there giving the signal. So that's like the empty sample with no spike added to it. And then as you add the spike, you can see that that signal is going to go up for um, the increasing amount of the standard that you put into your sample. For this, you get an equation that gives you the slope as Ka times the concentration of the standard over the final volume. And you get a y-intercept of Ka times the concentration of your unknown or your analyte and the volume of the analyte in the volume final, right? And then you can see down here the x-intercept is going to give you uh, the negative concentration of the analyte times the volume of the analyte over the concentration of the standard. And so you can actually do the calculation then for this one, the x-intercept, whatever that is, right? And you know the concentration of the standard, you know the volume of the uh, sample that you have, and you can calculate that value in there. Similarly, you can make a plot where you plot on the x-axis the concentration of the standard um, at the different dilutions that you've done. So you've got the volume of the standard over the final volume. And then um, you can also see that you can calculate the concentration of the analyte using the x-intercept uh, from your line. The slope in this case is going to be Ka, and the y-intercept is Ka times Ca times V0 over Vf, right? And so, um, you can end up using your equation of the line to be able to figure out what Ka is. It's just going to be the slope of your line, right? So you'll get your points and you'll do your linear regression just like we did with the external standards. And then you already know the Ka um, if you've plotted it this way. And then on uh, both of these, the y-axis is the signal that you get from the spike samples. Okay, so we are actually going to do this in lab and you'll get some experience making multiple standard additions, graphing that data, and calculating the concentration of your analyte from that standard. The difficulty here, I think, with standard additions is that for each sample that you want to measure, you have to make up this whole set of standards, right, because your sample is in there. So if you have multiple unknowns, making up standard additions is a little bit painful, right? If you have the external standard, you only have to make one external standard, and then you can measure all of your other unknowns against that standard, right? So, so multiple standard additions is a little bit more tedious, but if you do have matrix effects that are getting in the way of your reading, then standard additions can be a great way to try to get rid of those. So this is the equation of the line for this top graph here. And there is a little typo in this that I didn't notice before. Um, but usually when we look at the equation of a line, we, we think of it as y equals mx plus b. 
Um, this one is listed in the opposite order. So don't get too confused by that. It's listed as y equals b plus mx in this case. Um, but you could just shift around this term and put it first and then put the y-intercept over on the other side. So b is still the y-intercept, um, but you've got the slope here, which is this value, right? And then this is the x value, right? And so this isn't actually the x-intercept, though. I, I think this is a, a little bit of a misleading way to term this. This is just x. Right, so we usually say y equals mx plus b, and b is the y-intercept. Um, but y is on the other side of the equation, so whatever value for y that you want to put in there, you can calculate, um, you know, whatever value of x that has to be. Right, so if you want to find the x-intercept, then you have to set this to zero, right, and then calculate uh, based on that. Right, so. So the equation that you end up getting for the x-intercept is actually listed on this graph here. And this one is correct. Um, this term right here, just cross that kind of off. So it should be y equals the y-intercept plus the slope times x. You can actually calculate the x-intercept when you set y to 0. That's the only time that this point becomes the x-intercept which is why I think they labeled it this way in the textbook to show you this calculation down here, which actually gives you this value here for your x-intercept. And then you can use this to calculate your concentration of A. So this is just showing that derivation of getting the x-intercept. If, so if you're given a class problem like this, or if you're doing your lab next week where you're actually doing your own standard additions, you'll have this type of problem where you're going to have to build a graph and figure out the equation of the line and then use that equation of the line to find the x-intercept and then calculate your concentration of your unknown. Right, so here is a fifth spectrometric method for the quantitative analysis of lead in blood using a multiple point standard addition. The original blood sample has a volume of one milliliter and the standard used for spiking the sample has a concentration of 1560 parts per billion lead. All the samples were diluted to 5 mils before measuring the signal, and a calibration curve of S spike versus S standard has the following equation. So again, this one is written kind of backwards to the way we're used to looking at it. It is y equals b plus mx. Okay, so this term here is going to be the slope, and then this term here is the y-intercept, and then this is the x value. When you set S spike as zero with your equation of the line, that's when you can calculate the x-intercept. And then when you get that, um, it's going to give you the concentration of your analyte. Okay, so if we do that, Right, we're going to set the equation equal to zero. We can solve for x, and that's going to be our x-intercept. So we'll get this value if you solve that equation. And we know that that is equivalent to the negative concentration of the analyte times the volume of the analyte over the concentration of the standard. From our problem, we know that the concentration of the analyte was one milliliter. The initial concentration of the standard was 1560 parts per billion, and then our concentration of our analyte or our unknown. That's going to equal this value here. We can then solve for CA. And in this case, CA still gives us a concentration of 1.33 parts per billion. So you, you should be able, if you have the same um, analyte, you should be able to get the same value in parts per billion, whatever method that you're using to calculate your concentration. Um, usually when you have multiple standards, either external or standard addition in this case, if you had matrix effects, the multiple standard additions usually will give you better accuracy because you have multiple samples that you're measuring and you're using the average of all of those based on that regression line that you're putting into your 
equation in your graphic representation. 